Hi, I'm Elgi Valovirta and this is about how to play Red Wolves Crossing the Line and the gear I used on the recording. So yeah, the clip of the video you just heard is the video of crossing the line. So uh, if you're not familiar yet with the track, I'll put links in the description below for the video and for the Spotify and Apple Music so you can stream it or download it. Okay, uh, the gear I use now is the same gear I used on the song and on the whole album. The guitar is a uh, ESP Japan custom shop Eclipse with mahogany body, maple top, maple neck, ebony fingerboard, jumbo frets, got a lugging tuners, got a bridge and EMG 8185 pickups. The tuning of this song is drop B flat or drop A sharp. So it's a standard C tuning, which is two, two steps lower from your standard E tuning. And then the low E string is dropped an extra whole step to B flat. <laughs> like that. And then the signal, it goes to Jimi Hendrix Crybaby Wah that I used use on the solo and bus super overdrive and ESP decimator noise reduction just to get rid of the small hiss. Then the signal goes to Marshall JZM 800 from 1984 to 203 with 6550 power tubes. And that amp is on the recording, it is on the left side, left speaker and the solo. And I doubled the rhythm track with the, another 800 to 203 from 1985 with EL34 power tubes. And that is on the right speaker, on the recording. Then the signal goes to serve reactive load where which is a reactive load and IR loader and I have there Jens Bulgren's rhythm IR pack it's not just for rhythm I used it on solos and everything and uh, the IR I use now and the only IR I used on the whole album and on the on the single is a uh, sound of god EQ2 and from reactive load the sound goes to Focusrite, Scarlett, 2Y2 audio interface and from there it goes to my Mac where I have my DAW is logic like I'm recording the guitar signal now. And on the album the rhythm tracks are completely dry and Matthias Sterngren, the guy who mixed, it, mixed and mastered the album added, just added a little bit of delay for the solo. But for this video I have put it just a slight amount of stereo reverb so that it's more, you know, you kind of feel that you're in the room but it's very tight. Basically what it's doing is just making my guitar sound for this purpose just a little bit wider like tiny okay very simple song two riffs the main riff and the second riff the first riff goes like this Cool, so slowly.
very simple and the pinch harmonic on the third fret of the E string. I've done a video of pinch harmonic, so if you're not familiar with the technique, you might want to check that out, put a link in there. But basically what it is, is that uh, you pick the string simultaneously with your pick and on the side of your thumb. Cool. Then comes the verse. It's just drums, bass, vocals. Then comes the pre-chorus. Goes like this. To the chorus which is the main riff. And yeah the, the bass on the verses it's basically playing this main riff with a slight variations because Janne Joutsenin who played the bass I basically told him to just do your own stuff but in the style of this main riff. Okay so slowly the pre-chorus riff So it's basically power chord, it's a G, because G will be like this with the standard tuned guitar, but this is in drop, so this is G. I mean, the actual ringing note isn't G, since this is in drop B flat tuning, but for the sake of simplicity, and at least I think this as, you know, what they would be on a normal tuned guitar, otherwise it's just too much information. So, and there's a this kind of like small bend and vibrato. And then vibrato again on the on the D. So it's kind of like. And then again this. So it's a D, like pedal point. So D, C, B. And again, a small bend slash vibrato. Actually, not that small, pretty wide. And when you double these things with vibrato, because it's not never exactly the same, the sound just comes even more bigger. Then comes, uh, after the second pre-chorus, comes the solo, and the background of the solo is the main riff, drums and bass, and I used a wah-wah on, on the solo, the Jimi Hendrix one I mentioned, so it goes like this. <laughs> Cool. Slowly, I do it without a wah. So it's your, you know, basic pentatonic stuff.
So l let me go all this through. So it starts with the you know, pentatonic. <laughs> Now comes the blue notes. So it creates this tension instead of. And then comes this chromatic. Again on the blue note, not. But. Minor third there. And then this classic blues lead. combining minor and major pentatonics. So, first box, then this is from pentatonic second box, and then comes like kind of the, the theme comes again, but played a little bit differently here on the fourth box of uh, minor pentatonic. And a wide vibrato, and then it's just uh, down all four boxes of pentatonic. So the first one is combining the third and the fourth box of pentatonic. Second box. First box. Like that. Then it's the pre-chorus riff again, and then the main riff. The ending is a little bit different. Let me show you, because previously the riff goes like this. So the ending is just the same, but the final part goes like... instead of so it's just whoops and then slide from nowhere to the d power chord with all three strings and wide vibrato. Cool. So, that's crossing the line. And thank you for the amazing feedback we've gotten from the song. Originally, this song, like basically all of the album songs, has appeared on my previous YouTube video. So this song I wrote this originally for the video Marshall Jay's in 800 Metal, which is one of my most viewed videos so far. Put the link there if you wanna check out the original video. Thanks for watching. If you like, you know, please subscribe and so on. Hopefully you're all safe and sound there. All the best. Take care. Bye. I added this afterwards, since I forgot to mention. <laughs> the song starts with an open D5 chord, which is actually D flat. Mm -hmm.